Hello dear friends! Since the last watercolor tutorial, it has been a while and now I would like to go back to watercolor painting with a very special flower uh, which is recognized as a symbol of Ukraine, my home country. Today we will paint a uh, sunflower and I would like to show you how it's done. I've prepared a quick sketch already and I just want to guide you through the way I um, made the sketch. So I started with uh, drawing the center, the heart of the sunflower and um, you can present the sunflower basically in uh, two circles. One circle will be for the heart and the second circle will be to show the outer line uh, of the sunflower to demonstrate how far each petal will go. So if you look at uh, some of my sketches, uh, you can see that no matter how you uh, show the sunflower, depending on where the head of the sunflower is looking at, uh, you can still draw it in a way of two circles. The circle for the center and the circle for the petals. To have a perfect circle, you can just outline any round object. It can be a candle, a jar, or something like a tape <laughs> that I used for myself, as well as the outer circle. This one doesn't have to be perfect because this is just something for you to remember uh, so you know how far each petal is going to go. We will remove those circles. Notice how uh, different each petal looks like. The petals have the same shape, but because they are bended or curved or a little bit uh, moved on the side, they all have slightly different shapes. So when you're gonna draw your petals, make sure that every petal is a little bit different from the other one. Every petal is unique. We also have a cute little bumblebee <laughs> sitting on the sunflower, which I thought would be nice to include in this painting. And now you can go and draw your own sketch, or you can also uh, download the outline, the trace of this exact uh, drawing without the additional lines, of course, <laughs> in our Patreon. The link to the Patreon is in the description of this video. Now I will carefully remove the lines with the eraser and we can start painting. My lines now are almost invisible. The paper is attached with the tape to keep it nice and straight when I will use more water, which will deform the paper a little bit so I can keep it straight and now I would like to mix my colors. I will use nice and watery gamboge as my main color for the petals. Why watery? Because I will use wet and dry technique, meaning I will paint with a nice wet uh, <laughs> brush on top of a dry paper. Right up, I will pre-mix a little bit of orange color, which I will achieve by adding red into my gamboge yellow. Uh, additionally, I will use burnt sienna for darker tones of the petals. And sometimes when I need to get the darkest tone, I will add uh, sienna mixed with blue color, uh, which will have a nice calm dark uh, brown tone for the darkest um, shadows. I will also use a quite dark yellow color, but the one that I achieve by myself and the way to achieve it is to use a technique <laughs> uh, by relying on the color wheel. So if we have yellow color and we need to make it darker. Uh, the best way to do so is to use a complementary color and on the color wheel, the complementary color is the one that's opposite, so it's violet. And this will be the best way to comb down yellow and make it slightly darker. And this is exactly how I achieved my dark yellow tone over here, which I will use uh, to do some cast shadows uh, from one petal on 
another and of course there will be some green colors as well with my round natural brush I am applying yellow on the first petal Cambodge yellow is very nice and vibrant yellow color sometimes it's even uh, leaning towards mustard <laughs> and I think it's really a uh, good color to represent the sunflower right away while the layer is still wet I'm adding drops of the orange color that I just mixed and I let those colors blend and stay there to dry while I'm moving on to the next petal however I'll skip this one and paint the petal next to it because I don't want this petal to bleed into this one and colors to mix up because both layers will be wet so the safest option is to paint every other petal <laughs> while giving them the chance to get dry And now I need to wait for my petals to get completely dry before I can work on the remaining petals to make sure that they don't leak into each other to preserve the clarity of each color on each petal. One of the cool things you can do, the tricks <laughs> you can use to portray uh, the texture, some those special veins on the petals of the sunflower is to use a sharp object. Like for example, I have this pin that I use to <laughs> open up a SIM card section on my phone. Uh, it can be also a nail or some brushes have a pointy end uh, on the other side. And basically we need any object that can scratch. And while the pigment is still uh, wet, you can scratch the texture of the petal. It will be a very nice, thin and delicate line, which most likely you won't be able to achieve by simply painting with a brush. The brush will be too thick the stroke of the brush will be too thick and scratching like so allows us to achieve a more delicate, thinner and accurate <laughs> strokes. My petals are almost dry. You can see that some places are still shiny, which means uh, they're still a bit wet, but it's not going to affect what I'm going to do next. If you were using um, cellulose paper just like me by adding so much watery pigment might uh, leave uh, a bit of um, cauliflower effect on your petals which means some sharp outlines of the pigment that got dry it is natural for cellulose paper because cellulose paper tends to keep the water and pigment on the surface instead of absorbing it which creates sort of a pattern and kind of like special <laughs> um, blob <laughs> on the surface of the paper which i think 
can be used as a special effect in your painting. You can use it to your own benefit to create some nice and airy watercolor painting. Now that, oh, there's one more here, <laughs> almost forgot. I'll make it slightly more orangey so it can differentiate from the other two petals. As you can see, it leaked a little bit on the wet layer of the other petal that I mentioned earlier but I think it doesn't really damage the painting we can work on it later on when we will add texture and shadows I think over here we can also add a little petal because it feels quite empty so it would be nice to fill up the space now I would like to leave petals alone <laughs> and to let them dry while I'm working on the heart of our sunflower. For the heart I will need to mix up my colors which I was talking about earlier. I'll start with first making the heart of our sunflower wet but going all the way around the bumblebee. So bumblebee is uh, dry, I don't touch it but everywhere else around it, in the center of the flower, I will put some water. And now, with the dot-like moves, I'm introducing some nice, bright uh, orange slash yellow colors. I'm doing this first because later on I will add darker tones and we can always go darker in watercolor but we can't go backwards, we can't make something lighter. That's why we always need to start with the lightest tone, with the lightest color and move to the darkest one. Now I get a bit of burnt sienna and I add more of a brownish tone. And I go very close to each petal and sometimes even 
fill out space in the middle in between of the petals. I'm using this dot like moves to create more chaotic patterns to make the center of the flower look more um, airy, light, so that the lighter tones, the orange ones, can be still visible and kind of shine through the darker ones. We also need to go as close as possible to the bumblebee and outline it. So you basically touch the edge of the bumblebee, of the pencil line, and this is called negative space technique. So you're painting an object by outlining it, by painting outside of it and because we paint outside of it the general shape is clear and we can recognize that it's a bee And now I would like to leave it to dry and continue painting the second layer. Now with the mix of burnt sienna and a tiny bit of uh, yellow, I would like to go over my petals and mark some shadows and textures. What we're doing now is called layering technique because we waited for our first layer to get completely dry before we started to apply the next layer and by doing so we create a feeling of depth and also three-dimensionality of our flower. In some areas we might even add the darkest tone that we mixed by uh, combining burnt sienna with blue.
And remember, uh, we talk about darker yellow tone, which you achieve by combining two complementary colors by adding violet to yellow. I have it premixed over here and using this darker tone, I'd like to show some of the shadows that naturally one petal is casting over another one. For example, here we can see a very clear shadow of another petal cast on the bottom petal. Just make sure not to make it too dark. And with final details, I just want to show the areas where two petals touch each other and create this more noticeable shadow. Make this distinction between the petals a bit more clear. With a bit of orange, I'm placing the strokes with a little bit of a distance in between them. I also get some yellow to sort of connect those orange strokes. And with a light orangey color mixed with additional drop of burnt sienna, I am showing some watery petals. Not petals, wings. <laughs> wings, wings. Now there is the body and the head. Now I left some of the like white spaces there on purpose. Because I want to fill it up 
with black color mixed with burnt sienna, but mostly black, so it's black is dominant. And introduce some of the black stripes on our bumblebee. Right in those white areas that are left untouched, but I also kind of leave some of the sparkling white um, spots of uncovered, unpainted <laughs> uh, paper. And I let the color just flow and mix, which will make it feel like the bumblebee is fluffy. I've got these cauliflowers on my paper because I use lots of water, but there is of course a different technique to paint the sunflower where you have much more control over the water, the amount of water in your brush, so you achieve smoother uh, lines and uh, washes on the petal so that every petal is super smooth and there's no sharp edges or connections at all. This is just a different technique where you uh, use way less water in your brush. I like the watery effects, the cauliflowers, it, make it makes the painting look very airy and sunny uh, and in the same style I would like to paint the background. And first I'll apply clean water everywhere around uh, my petals, around the sunflower. Add some red to it to make it darker. And I'm doing so because, again, if we look at our color wheel, we can see that uh, red color has the opposite color to it, green. And if you want to make red darker and calmer, you add green and reverse. If you want to make green darker and calmer, you add a little bit of red. It's all about balance. Now carefully, I'll go very close to each petal with a tiny brush. And with a larger brush, I can finish up. And also play with some of the other tones, like for example, adding some yellow. And then green again. And then some splashes of darker green. Maybe even blue. The important part here is that your brush carries lots of water, just like in the beginning when we were working on our petals. This way we will... This way we will harmonize our painting. So that this um, cauliflower effect is present everywhere in the painting and it's balanced out.
and also we need to remember about this blank area it cannot be just white because the background is green so we need to be consistent and add some of the green in between Now, to make the cauliflower effect even more uh, noticeable, <laughs> I'll take a very watery pigment and just drop some. Uh, you probably want to cover your yellow part so it's not covered with sprinkles. Just to protect your sunflower. Now when the paper got dry, you can clearly see all the colors that are mixed up uh, in my background. You can see um, some of the yellows and maybe a bit of blue, darker green, lighter green. All of the tones are just shining through and showing off <laughs> in its glory and you also have this um, cauliflower effect that is kind of um, balancing out and corresponding to this one so the whole painting looks nice and balanced so now we're just gonna need to add some final strokes some details like i said the bumblebee i would like to add a few spots on it just to make it more visible on top of our uh, sunflower <laughs> and I'll just add a few tiny details on the wings super thin delicate strokes with a very dry pigment my brush is very dry it's almost scratching the paper because you want to make sure that your bumblebee uh, wings are nice and tender. With the white gel pen, I can add a bit of a highlight, sort of a reflex on our bumblebee. just to make it pop up even more. I also feel like uh, lines over here are a little bit too aggressive, so I'd like to smooth them out by, well, washing them out. <laughs> it's a petal after all, so I would like to keep it tender. Yes, I think that's better. And well, don't forget to sign your creation if you were painting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this uh, sunflower painting, which uh, means a great deal to me. And I hope you had some fun and learned something new while painting the flower with me. See you in the next tutorial.